What's up ladies and gents, Colin here. New video, new series, new style. I'm gonna dig into some current events, posts, social media stuff, a piece that I did. There'll be links to everything below. And I'm gonna start doing more of these, whether there'll be news pieces, studies that come out, dumb things people said that I wanna comment on. Not sure what I'm gonna call this just yet, but let's dig into today's content. This first post was shared by Sean Baker, obviously big carnivore guy, big carnivore movement. People with high cholesterol should eliminate carbs not saturated fat, the study suggests. It only took 2020, July 6th to come up with this, something that most of us have already known for quite literally years now. Uh, I mean, even keto and the Adkins diet, these diets were far ahead of their time. And Adkins specifically was demonized, criticized, condemned. All of his colleagues that were buying into the status quo of low fat and whatever actively tried to discredit him and by all accounts, make his life pretty freaking miserable. Now, I think he ended up doing okay, but imagine you're a doctor scientist and you have obviously friends in the field and you have colleagues you work with or whatever, and then you start kind of sharing ideas that you believe are true, which we found out they were, uh, and all the data suggested that, the fact that he lost weight, other people were losing weight, right? Like obviously something there. It kind of reminds me of the Samuel Ignaz, or, or actually his name is Ignaz Sam Samuel Wise. The guy that made the connection between hand washing in the hospitals and he tried to promote it in the Vienna hospital and he was shamed, ridiculed, and eventually fired. And by all accounts, he died because he went crazy. I can't imagine that's an easy thing to bear. It's like, why is it always that these these basically martyrs, these iconoclasts that come out and speak truth, even Galileo was locked up on house arrest because, and he had to recount what he said because it was hearsay to the Catholic church. There is so many examples of this throughout history. And it's uh, no different in 2020 with all the nonsense. It reminds me of that Schopenheimer quote that I recently posted about. It's like, at first, all truth is ridiculed, then it is uh, accepted, and then it is and then it is considered obvious and evident or something like that. I'm obviously paraphrasing, but it's like all truth goes through these phases. You know, first they try to burn you at the stake like they did with the witches. And then they just kind of accept it and they don't really make a fuss about it. And then enough time goes by and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's obvious. Of course that's the way it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly fascinated by human nature. And the thing I'm struggling with right now is accepting it. For years I've been a stoic and trying to remind myself of these stoic principles of accepting things that I can control and, you know, not letting things outside myself stress me out and whatever. And it's like, you obviously go through waxing and wanings and you go through different seasons in your life. And... The season as of late is having to accept the reality that the entire world has lost its mind. Now, even on planes, there's no medical exemption. So they're basically like, you have to wear a mask or you can't come on. And other totalitarian, tyrannical nonsense. It's not based in actual science or data. It's based in a bunch of lacking science and data, actually. It's based in a lot of hysteria, hyperbole, and agenda-seeking morons, useful idiots in government and positions of power. Well, that's the first piece. Let's get on to the next one, because otherwise the video is going to be too long. So since we were talking about that, here's a post from Jody Mishunk. She's an outspoken proponent of masks and all the stuff's going on. This popped up in my social feed on Instagram. Being told I wish you'd die by people wearing a mask because they care about me is so confusing. You know, it's this virtue signaling of the mask wearing, but it's also the crazy people that are criticizing, attacking, condemning people that aren't wearing a mask or don't want to wear a mask or challenging the mask narrative with this kind of toxic bullying nonsense. Humans are... Fickle, dangerous, obnoxious, absurd, disgusting creatures. We are. They are. And human nature itself is so dangerous. Did you know there's no other animal animal kingdom that has slaughtered members of its own species the way humans have? Next piece. So this is nutrition related. From Logan BSC. And so some of these I'll have to just put the picture of. I don't have a link to the actual source because these are just screenshots. We are part of a society that believes canola oil filled mock meats are healthier than red meat. Just let that sink in. I don't think everyone believes it. I think the media has been per perpetuating this nonsense, the plant-based narrative and, and the massive amount of money they're spending on this uh, to try to make this the standard. Like Bill Gates is investing in these plant-based companies. They're moving plant-based manufacturing over to China. Nestle's getting into plant-based game. All of them are getting into plant-based game. They're trying to talk about how it's the future. Here's the thing though. Plants trip mine the planet. Certain animals, not all, like obviously chickens and pigs have their own issues, but ruminant animals specifically are actually part of the natural balance ecosystem. And when you use regenerative farming practices and rotational grazing, things like that, beef cattle can reduce carbon emissions, can help replenish topsoil, and can basically reverse all this climate change stuff going on. You know, yeah, media's murder, whatever. Second point, plants to grow them kill a bunch of other species. 
Okay, so this is that weird vegan plant-based logic. Now, if you want to do that for yourself for reasons, whatever, I understand that. But don't create a false narrative, not based on science or data. When you clear a plot of land and you grow these monocrops or any large swath of vegetable or anything like that, invariably, especially with the use of pesticides, tilling and other practices, you're killing potentially thousands of organisms and countless species. Some say the reason Katrina and the flooding is so bad down there is because the runoff of the destruction of a lot of ecosystems in the middle of the country. There's a lot of issues with the wetlands being destroyed and not being able to do their job. And we have flooding all the time because soils are depleted. Farmers that strip mine by growing plants, the soils, they get lower, 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 the less aerated, and they can hold less water. Whereas soils that have ruminant animals that are grazing and rotating, and there's other animals and bugs and birds and trees and all these different things going on, these soils actually replenish and grow and can hold more water. In my mind, if we just looked at the data, growing plants is worse for the environment and for sentient animals than ruminant agriculture. Now, mass-produced pork and chicken, they're their own thing. There's a lot of problems with both of those, but they can still be done in a way on a mixed-use, regenerative agriculture, family farm style, smaller farm operation. And you can look at some people that are doing this. Gabe Brown, he's actually doing it at a large scale. Uh, the Biggest Little Farms is a really good documentary that you can show how you can include a bunch of different parts of nature. In my mind, this is solved. But what is solved in my mind does not mean it's solved in, in the masses. So here's a quote, speaking of that from Sacred Cow. We had her from Sustainable Dish. We had her on the podcast recently. Uh, Methane claims against cattle are overblown. And here's a chart here. According to the EPA, all livestock only represents 3.9% of the US GHG emissions, which is far lower than the 18 to 51% many plant-based advocates report. The largest source of GHG emissions in the US comes from energy and transportation. Obvious freaking late. <laughs> The amount of cars that are zipping through every single day and trucks and semis and boats and oil tankers and crap, like people think that some cows grazing on, on you know, outside and, and cow farts are like ruining the environment. Like it's unbelievable that people have kind of bought into this narrative. And also this even includes ag livestock. So if you look here, only 2% uh, is beef. And again, we're talking about probably the mass produced beef, which I don't think we should be doing. We should be moving them to a regenerative model. We should not be fattening them up on core soy and wheat. They should be grass fed, grass finished, ideally small farms. We can move them and rotationally graze them, etc. Here's a quote from a book that I highlighted today. Later, when talking to his disciples, a master was more forceful. Concepts define, he said. To define is to destroy. Concepts dissect reality. And what you dissect, you kill. Are concepts then quite useless? No. Dissect a rose and you will have valuable information and no knowledge whatsoever of the rose. Become a scholar and you will have much information, but no knowledge whatsoever of reality. And I could not think of a perfect quote. That's why I took a picture of this than 2020 and all these experts that look into graphs and studies and all these different things and they cherry pick data and they form their own conclusions basically based on what they want to uh, think or what their media outlet or what the funder of the research or what their corporation or what their business or whatever wants them to think. And they go out in the world and they perpetuate that nonsense. I want to keep these under 10 minutes. We're already at 11. Let's go. Let's find one more piece that we can do. All right. This one, Ben Shapiro, screenshot. The basic premise of socialism is I'm here. I'm breathing. Give me crap. <laughs> Pretty good way to put it. So that's it for today. What I'd like you to do is if you have things that you want me to cover or talk about, you can always email them to me, call it wildfoods.co. Uh, there'll be links to each one of these below. I'll probably just put them in a Dropbox folder or a Google or PD, a presentation. I don't know. I'll put it somewhere where we can get the link. I'll be doing these on my main YouTube, my name, and I'll also be doing them on the Escaping Fragility Show where I'll cover a little bit more of the political and monetary side of things and some news that's coming out. Whereas on this channel, I'm going to stick to mostly some of the health-related stuff. So if you want to learn more about that, you can just type in Escaping Fragility or go to Colin.coach and get on the AM5 newsletter to get all the updates. I hope to see you in the next one. Hey, hey, Colin here. Got a freebie for you. Click on the button below to go to the ancestralmind.com and download the seven principles of living wild. This is a short PDF that's got some of the main principles such as real food, sleep, movement, and a couple more that are gonna help you live more ancestrally in accordance with your genes.